Hello, my name is Curtis Evans. I am an education coordinator and raptor specialist at the Peregrine Fund's World Center for Birds of Prey. The Peregrine Fund's mission is to use science to understand how we can better coexist with birds of prey species and help prevent their extinction. We use the same skills and concepts that you study in school and we apply them to our research as we get to know these birds in the wild and what their needs are and how it is that we can help save them from extinction. One of the things that we study is we look at their traits that they inherit from their parents. We can call these adaptations, but these, um, these adaptations or these traits that they inherit help them to survive. Now, um, as we look at a, the bigger group, as we look at a group of birds, there are some inherited traits that they, um, that they inherit from their parents um, that put them in this group of birds, namely feathers, a beak, and they lay hard eggshells. Um, now, there are about 10,000 different types of birds. Compared to mammals, it's about twice as many different species. There are all about 5,000 types of mammals, different species. Now in birds, like I said that's about 10,000, twice as many different ways to be a bird. Now, as a bird becomes, or as any species, becomes better at one thing that they do, um, they then become less efficient at doing other things. And that leaves room for a different species to become good at that or to fill that space. And so I want you to look at these birds that we're going to meet here and find ways that you think they could be better at doing a particular thing and where maybe a different bird can be better at doing something that the other first bird is not as good at. And so the first bird that I want to look at today is the group of eagles and specifically we're going to meet a golden eagle. This here is my friend Marshall and Marshall is a golden eagle. He's a three-year-old male golden eagle and eagles are birds of prey. They share the talons, the curved beak, and the forward-facing eyes but a group of eagles is identified as a large bird of prey um, able to take very large things um, depending on their habitat there's about 60 different eagles and they live in deserts on the coasts um, or in the jungles and they can be grouped in different groups based on some of those other features you'll have sea eagles who are eating a lot of fish you have snake eagles who are have some adaptations that make it great for eating capturing and eating snakes you have booted eagles like this gentleman here who has feathers down his legs, down the tarsus of his foot there. And um, you could think of different reasons, maybe that uh, feathers could help a bird survive. Maybe some of these booted eagles use them to stay warm, maybe as a form of protection of some sort. And each of those different species among those booted eagles might use those feathered legs slightly differently. Um, here though, a golden eagle, they're found all over the northern hemisphere, so North and Central America, um, Europe, Asia, Africa, um, and they are known as very generalists. They are pretty well suited for being good at eating lots of different stuff. And so um, being a large bird of prey, um, that means they've got an eagle has long, broad wings and feathers on those wings. And they also have a pretty heavy body. A golden eagle can be from 6 to 15 pounds. And he's a smaller boy. The boys take up that smaller end of that range. And the females are heavier and take up the larger end of that um, 6 to 15 pound range. And so, let's see if we can get a little bit closer look at this gentleman here. See if he wants to say hello. You can see that very large eagle beak those forward-facing raptor eyes, and then those talons, those big, strong feet of an eagle for capturing things, like in his case, um, rabbits, other, um, other mammals, um, ground squirrels, or um, a lot of reptiles, snakes, lizards, don't stand a chance with this guy. Um, some golden eagles are known to take very large things like a small deer. Um, that's pretty rare, but it happens. All right, the next group of birds we're gonna look at 
are the hawks. Now, hawks are very closely related to eagles, and we say that because they share a lot of the same adaptations, um, the behaviors that help them to survive and the, and the inherited traits. One of the key features that um, hawks and eagles share is they build stick nests. Um, most other raptors do not, but here we have eagles and hawks who survive by laying their eggs inside of a nest that they build. Now, there are two different groups of hawks. There are um, excipiters, which are um, short-winged, but long feathers on the wings. So they have short but broad wings, and they are great at capturing food out of the air as they have quick bursts of speed and are very maneuverable. We have a second group we call budios, and those hawks have the longer wings, but they still have long feathers. So they have long, broad wings, much more like eagles in their behavior to soar and spend a long time up in the air looking for food. And here we are, we're gonna meet one now. This here is my friend Finn. And Finn is a boy, a male, red-tailed hawk. Now Finn hatched one year ago. He's only one year old here this spring. He hatched in 2019. Now as another juvenile, he's not a chick, right? He's left the nest, he's fully feathered but he's not an adult. Um, Red-tailed hawks become adults about two to three years old. Um, and you'll see that as his tail is not red yet. Um, this summer and this fall, as he molts, you'll see his red tail come in. His um, feathers across his chest will also become a little bit more uniform in a pattern. Right now they're, they're a little mottled and kind of um, oddly spaced. Um, also, his eyes are yellow now, and as an adult, they'll become more brown as he gets older. Uh, Red-tailed hawks are a budio, and so they have the long and broad wings for soaring, much like an eagle, however, much smaller. So hawks are a smaller, a medium-sized raptor, still eating those ver vertebrates, those animals, um, Red-tailed hawks are very generalist. They will eat lots of different creatures, um, but rodents, reptiles, other birds are still on the menu, just depending on where they're found. And uh, red-tailed hawks are found from Canada, the United States, Mexico, the Caribbean islands, and parts of Central America. And uh, so whatever food is local is what they eat. Otherwise, he's pretty easy to catching things about half his weight. And a red-tailed hawk is between a pound and a half and three and a half pounds. Finn here is just about, not quite, two pounds. Now you'll maybe notice he does not have feathers on his legs, on this bottom part of his leg there. And so he is a hawk for sure. Uh, Finn and I, he likes to get outside. He likes to soar around. Um, if you see this canyon behind us, that would be an ideal place for him to go hunting. Uh, but they're also found in the woods, on the coasts, in the deserts, um, very um, generalists. So Finn is one of my favorite birds. Uh, as a red-tailed hawk, he's going to have a very different color pattern than other red-tailed hawks you might see. Depending on where you find them, there's going to be different groups of uh, color patterns. Some are different that are more north or east or west or further south or in the islands. They have some different color patterns. They're the same species, but those different kind of family groups um, pass on those different color morphs. And so you can see those different inherited traits even within the same species. Now the next group of birds we're going to look at are vultures. They're fairly similar to hawks and eagles. They're, they can be much bigger than hawks, or some are hawk-sized, but their key feature is that they are scavengers. There are 23 vulture species on this planet, but 16 of which are threatened with extinction or endangered. And so our research on vultures is very important. This here is my friend Lucy, and Lucy is a turkey vulture. Uh, vultures are similar to um, other birds of prey. They have the, uh, the animals, vertebrates. However, they are known for not killing their food. They will scavenge. And so 
they seem to share a lot of those adaptations with eagles. They have very large bodies, long and broad wings for soaring and staying up in the air. However, as a, as a bird that doesn't kill for food, however, still eating those, using those adaptations to eat those large animals, these toenails, curved beak, powerful eyes to find those food. Uh, turkey vultures are also known for having an extremely um, strong sense of smell. Um, so she can hunt with her nose. A lot of times we think of uh, vultures as circling over the deserts, and that's what a lot of vultures need to do because they need to see their food. However, a turkey vulture can use their nose, and so they're great at um, finding that food in jungles and forests as well. So a turkey vulture, they can be found anywhere throughout North America, Central and South America in those jungled areas, as well as the deserts. And so Lucy here is our turkey vulture, and they also have that bald head for keeping their face clean. Oh, where do you want to go? Want to come here? And you also might notice that she has crusty white on her feet, and that's how she cleans her feet after a meal. She's been touching raw meat, and she needs to clean that, and so her poop will run down her legs and kill off the germs and bacteria to keep her healthy. The next group of birds we're going to look at are the owls, and their feathers have some unique adaptations that allow them to fly silently. They have fringing along the edge, and they are very soft for that silent flight. But the softness of these feathers does not let them repel water as well, so an owl can get wet much easier than another bird of prey. Now, owls also have that unique shape of a face with the roundness around their ear to send sound into their ear so they can hunt very well with their hearing. They have great night vision. And they can see during the day as well, but they see better at night than the other uh, birds of prey do. So there are uh, over 200 owl species, and we are going to take a look at two of them. This here is Winston, and Winston is a male, nine-year-old western screech owl. Now, here in North America, we have two species of screech owl, an eastern and a western. And we, for a long time, thought they would, were the same species, or we put them in a group as the same species, until we realized that they make different sounds. They, um, the eastern and western screech owls make different sounds, and they identify each other differently and will find their own species based on sound. And we also notice the eastern screech owls have some different color morphs where they'll have more of a grays and rusty colors where our western screech owls are pretty much all the same gray color that they inherit from their parents. They're small, they nest in cavities, and they don't need to eat very much. Winston weighs less than half a pound and you can nest inside of a cavity in a tree. This here is Oliver, our two-year-old male Verose or Milky Eagle Owl. They're from Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, out in the prairie savanna-like areas where there's grasslands, trees, a little bit of water. That's where you'll find this species. Now, he has all of the features that put him into the bird of prey category. Talons, curved beak, forward eyes to capture and eat those vertebrates that meet. Now as an owl, he has those features that put him in that group. Two toes in the front and two toes in the back. As well as these very even larger forward facing eyes and that rounded facial disc to help him with his hearing. Now. There's a smaller group of owls called Bubo, and that includes our great horned owls and the other eagle owls around the world. And so he is in an even smaller group where they have these other features. I don't think you can see them right now, but his feather tufts can stick up um, like you see on our great horned owls. And so um, a great, beautiful creature um, has his own unique features that make him a milky eagle owl and also those other features that put him into those other broader groups. Now they can range in size among the species um, but they all look pretty similar on the outside. Um, naked or featherless eyelids, really black eyes, 
and this beautiful, beautiful gray plumage. Yeah, these guys are also generalists. They'll eat just about anything they can capture inside of these talons. This guy, these guys weigh between um, four to eight pounds. And so Oliver here as a boy, he's again on the smaller range um, as a four pound Varroa's eagle owl. There are two other groups of birds of prey that we were not able to explore today, and that includes our falcons and sariamas. But with the birds you did see, I hope you could identify those overarching traits that all birds of prey share that help them to survive by eating vertebrates or meat. And that includes those talons, the forward-facing eyes, and that curved beak. Now, each of the groups we looked at within birds of prey those traits are slightly different to help them survive on slightly different strategies and different prey. Even down to the species level, we saw variation within the species, whether it was size or some colors that they inherited from their parents. Now, if you would like to meet some more of our education birds, you can visit our Peregrine Fund Facebook page or peregrinefund.org, where you can explore some more raptors, meet some of our scientists and the projects around the world to conserve birds of prey. Thank you so much for joining me. If you find any birds that you think are the best at something, feel free to comment or share in some way what you've learned about these birds.